Arlo Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What do I have going on for you for today? Oh my word, I can hardly believe I'm saying it, but can I just tell you, I am so excited to be bringing to you my first Christmas 2021 DIY. I love this DIY because it is a DIY that I feel is super useful and it is using items that you can get from the Dollar Tree. It's about that time of year where people are starting to send out their holiday cards. And in past years, truth be told, I really did tape my cards up on my front door. I did, I'm not lying. Don't know why I did that. Maybe a momentary lapse in judgment for a few years, but I did do that. This year, I decided I wanted to make something that I could actually display my cards on. And so that is what I'm bringing to you today, a DIY card holder display that is so quick, easy, budget friendly, and it's got that country Christmas rustic feel that I absolutely love. Now I will say that this piece is a very versatile piece and it can be done to suit any decor style if that rustic feel, farmhouse feel isn't for you. I can't wait to show you what I've come up with for a DIY card holder that you are not gonna wanna miss. Did I tell you? It's one you're absolutely gonna love. I love this one. It's a great DIY to start the season off with, I think. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it and let's do some Christmas Dollar Tree DIYing on a budget, because that's what we do here. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Has it been totally obvious that I love working with these plaques this holiday season? I'm not done yet. I've taken stock in these plaques. Today you're going to need three of them. If you can't find these exact ones, it's okay. Any plaques that are about this size will do. The size really is dependent on how big you want this DIY to be. I'm going to remove these embellishments. Today I'm not going to store these because I'm going to use them to help attach the three plaques together since I have them. Why not? I'm going to use a hodgepodge of things on the back of this plaque because it is the back and nobody's going to see it. And if you want to cover it up, you can cover it up. Using some of this wood glue by Super Glue that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Have I told you that this stuff is amazing? Because it is. I'm going to place them on the back of these embellishments and just place these embellishments where the two plaques meet. In turn, attaching the two plaques together. But we've got three plaques here that we need to attach together. So I'm just going to move on over to some of these handy jumbo popsicle sticks and do pretty much the same thing. Once I've got everything glued together, I am gonna go in with some masking tape and just kind of place them across the embellishments, across the popsicle sticks, kind of really pulling those plaques together so we get a nice, good seam. Yeah, a seam, we don't want a gap there. And sometimes these things kind of slide when you're using glue. And so, yeah, just put some tape and we're not even gonna take the tape off. We're gonna leave the tape on because remember, this is the back of this DIY. I'm just gonna fast forward right through the part where I showed putting the spackling on here. I don't really think I recorded it anyway. That was the back side. Don't know why I wanted to show you that again. For this next step, I'm gonna be using this fabric. This is a yard of fabric by Created that you can get at Walmart for about $6. This isn't a new fabric. This seems to be the theme of this fall harvest Christmas season that I am going with this year. I'm gonna cover these three plaques with it and to do that, yes, I'm gonna add a good base coat of some Mod Podge. Any Mod Podge will work. Matte, gloss, you pick it. I'm using the gloss that I still have in my stash because you know I'm not a gloss finished person, so I need to get rid of this stuff. Did I say 
we're gonna give this plaque a good coat of that. Once I've got a good base coat, I'm gonna go ahead and place the fabric over the top of the Mod Podge, smooth it out nicely, and then reapply a second coat to the top of the fabric because this is gonna help adhere it to the plaque. It's gonna stiffen it, and yeah, that's what we want because the stiffer the fabric is when you go to cut that excess fabric off, the better because you're gonna get a nice, smooth, clean cut using your plaques as a guide and a nice safety razor. I'm calling it a safety razor with a fresh new blade. This is the easiest way to cut that excess fabric off from the sides. And to this DIY, I will be adding one of these plaques here. Any shape that is similar to this in nature will work fine. When you remove this embellishment, don't get rid of it because I will be using it in an upcoming DIY. So we're gonna repurpose it. We're saving these because we're gonna reuse it. Did I say that yet? And for this plaque, we are going to need to fill in those holes because we don't want them to show. I will be painting this plaque with Waverly's Crimson Red. And to this red, I will be adding a bit of Hello Hobbies Brown because you know me, I am, have I ever said I'm a creature of habit? Because I totally am. You know I like those muted rustic colors. I am not about the bright ones. And so to mute out a bright red, if you add just a touch of brown to it, you're gonna get more of a rustic color, that muted kind of darker red that I like to go for. And so yes, this plaque is gonna get a good couple coats of this, this red. This red is one that I'll be using throughout the Christmas season as well. Guess what? I am going to be attaching this plaque to the three plaques that we covered in gingham. And so to do that, I'm gonna pound the bottom half of this plaque with a ton of hot glue. And I said the bottom half because I am not gonna place this whole plaque on the gingham plaques. That's what I'm gonna reference them as. You can see here just how I'm doing it. I am using the halfway point of this decorative plaque and placing it at the top of my gingham plaques. Did I just make that totally confusing? You'll see what I did here in a minute. Yes, I will be distressing this piece, surprise, surprise, using some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. Now, if Walnut Stain isn't for you, pick a shade that is. He's got a variety of shades and colors that you can use. You can find this Distress Ink at just about any hobby store, Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. You can even find it in Amazon. I will link it in the description box below in my Amazon store if you're interested. So to finish those edges up, if you just take a stiffer brush, because this is a bigger piece, I'm using a bigger brush this time to get the job done. You just kind of run that brush in that distress ink and just kind of go in a circular motion along the edges of your DIY. It not only is gonna give them a nice finished look, but it's gonna give them a nice aged look as well. That is called distressing. I will say initially I was just gonna go along the outside edges, but you can see that the center of this is just too stark and white. And so just by lightly kind of going over it, I'm gonna kind of mute out that white and rustic it up a bit, dirty it up a bit. Yes, dirty is rustic, that's what I'm gonna say. To this top plaque, I'm gonna be adding a vinyl decal and this one says, mm -hmm, Merry Christmas. Now I will say, I know that I have been adding more vinyl to my DIYs lately. And I do that because I have a Cricut and I have vinyl. Dollar Tree sells inexpensive vinyl, so why not do it if I have it? I am very mindful of the fact that not everybody has a Cricut, and that is why I like to give you options. An option for this decal would be to buy some stickers or poster board stickers from the Dollar Tree and use those. Go to Michael's Hobby Lobby Joann's and buy a sticker pack in a font that you like. You could use those. Or you can head on over to Linda's Etsy store where she has made these vinyl decals available to you for instant digital download for the bargain price of $3. You're gonna get your choice of one of these three decals for the price of $3. Or you can have her cut and send you the vinyl decal with free shipping for the bargain price of $5. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store, guess where? Yes, in the description box below. This is a card holder, so what are we gonna use to hold the cards on? Twine, of course we're gonna use twine. I'm gonna incorporate twine into this, I have to. It's a Christmas DIY, out with the raffia, in with the twine, yes. So by hot gluing the twine onto the back side of these plaques, then wrapping the twine around these three plaques several times in a fun way, in an organized way, 
We will now have a way to hang our cards on the front of these plaques. Dollar Tree is starting to put out some of their Christmas ornaments. I found this red and white buffalo check snowflake ornament set of six here. Perfect. Six for a dollar. You can't beat that. Red and white buffalo check is going to contrast nicely with the black and gray buffalo check that I'm using, giving this DIY just the pop of color that we need. Tying these snowflakes into that top plaque that says Merry Christmas. Oh my goodness, that was a mouthful. Can you tell I've had coffee this morning? I have, but I thought that these would be fun to add to the front of this plaque, just adding a bit more detail, more embellishment, so it doesn't look so plain. To hold the cards on this plaque, I will be using these medium-sized clothespins by Crafter Square. I know you all knew that already and I didn't have to tell you. That was kind of a no-brainer. But I will tell you, make sure you go with the medium-sized clothespins because the smaller ones don't really seem to hold the heavier cards all that well. And I also want to put out there, when you do add the twine to your plaque, you want to kind of pull it on the tighter side. You don't want there to be any give with your twine because that will just help hold the cards up better on the front of this plaque. Let's go take a look at this, shall we? I don't really have any cards yet to show you, but you'll get the idea. Cards are coming probably pretty soon. That's why I'm bringing you this DIY now. is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day. It's going out to Billy Collins, who is bringing to us her spin and her twist on my half pumpkin plaque. This is an awesome recreation. I am loving that she used Dollar Tree poster board letters. It turned out just as amazing. Billy, thank you so much for sharing your creation with us today. I think everybody one of these. What I love about this is this is a piece that really is actually pretty useful even outside of Christmas time just by switching up the decor style. I love this DIY. I say it's quick, it's easy, and it's budget friendly. I don't need to say it, you saw it. I hope you all enjoyed today's Dollar Tree Christmas card holder DIY, a rustic one. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.